And welcome back to Robin Elliott tonight. Just before the break, we heard Charlie McGett again with his winning Eurovision song from 30 years ago, Rock and Roll Kids. And earlier on this week, I caught up with the man himself to talk about 30 years since Eurovision. Here's what happened. So how did it all come about then, Rock and Roll Kids? Did you ever imagine 30 years ago that you'd still be singing that song today? Well, no. Uh, funnily enough, maybe I would have been singing it, but I didn't think I would be singing it to so many people. Um, I first heard the song, I was very friendly with Brendan Graham. We used to meet at all these different song contests that were held around Ireland. And we, I met him first at a song contest called the Wild Rose Song Contest in Manor Hamilton in Leitrim. And Brendan had won this contest so many times that he decided he wasn't going to enter anymore, but he was going to go, to go down as a judge just as for a social occasion. Anyway, I knew Brendan very well. We'd written songs together and stuff, but and he was always sending me new ones that he'd written. And he sent me um, um, a clunky old piano version himself. Brendan's not the best piano player in the world, but you know he's a he. he somebody said one time that he his main object in playing the piano was getting the the black notes in the same line as the white notes. <laughs> pound, pound. But anyway, he sent me this version of that, and I knew immediately it was a good song. And he asked me what I what I do when I sing a version of it for him, and and I did, and it. It was different. It was kind of I was big into um, country music at the time and um, it came out a little bit country and uh, it, was, it, it wasn't quite what Brendan wanted and it really wasn't, you know, it was fine. But about a year later, he sent me another version of the song and it was um, just this guy singing on a piano, nothing else. And I said, oh, Brendan, that's that's just wonderful. Who is that? And he said, that's Paul Harrington. And uh, I, I said, I didn't really know who Paul Harrington was, but he had uh, achieved quite a bit at the time. He had a couple of uh, um, successful singles and a, and a successful album. So anyway, uh, I said, Brendan, do you know something? The really good thing about that song is just put it in like that, with just the piano and the vocal, and just see what happens. And of course, he put it in and it was rejected, didn't didn't get through at all. And then the following year, he put it in again, just shows you how actually he put it in three times into 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 the Irish competition to represent Ireland. And he put it in three times. And on the third time, lucky, yeah. uh, he, he, he hooked he hooked a listener in, in the panel, whoever was listening to the songs. So he came back to me. Oh, he said, "I'm after qualifying for the for the national song contest." Now Brendan had been in 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 the national in the Eurovision before with song when was a big song for Brendan uh, with Red Hurley, yeah. and uh, anyway here he was and he said and I said, "Now Brendan, do you remember what I said to you? I said, don't put on dancing girls or orchestras or smoke bombs or anything. Just let Paul sing it, just like he's singing it there on on the demo." Mm. He said, I think it needs something else, you know, and, and I said, what do you mean? I know. He said, I think it just needs something. Else. What do you mean? You. He said, I think it needs you. You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday. Um, you know, it's a sad song. Yeah, you know, because yeah. it's, it's it's looking back to better times, you know, married couple and they're wishing they could be as vital as they were back in 62 when, all, when they were listening to all that music. And and for that reason, uh, I think in Ireland, what's to say about it in Ireland? He said, all our wars are happy and all our songs are sad. Yes, you know, yeah. so we like a sad song. I mean, The Fields of Bath and Rye is probably one of the most famous Irish songs. And it's it's a sad song about a fellow being being yeah. sent off to Van Diemen's land, but people sing it like with the happiest song in the world at football matches, exactly, and yeah. rugby matches in particular. You know, so that was how um, that, how Brendan and Paul Paul and myself together. What was your memory of the moment that you found out that you've won when it said Ireland has won Eurovision? What was that like? It's a, it, it's it's hard to explain. They knew about 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 three votes to come from three different countries. People kept saying, "No, look at you won. Get ready to do the to do the reprise." And the piano, the guitar was sitting over there in the in the in the green room. And I said, "I'm not touching that piano until I hear. I'm not going to be with somebody who gets the guitar and and the winners are Poland. Oh, be jickers, you know." <laughs> so I waited until the very last minute. And 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 oh, you know, it was magic. It was so magic that I, when I went out onto the stage, I, I lifted Cynthia Nimorku, who was one of the compeers, and I, I lifted her and gave her a swing around. She was very lucky to, she escaped with her life, you know. But it was fantastic, you know. And uh, the crowd were on their on their on their feet, and you know, Mary Robinson, the president, was there. The T-shirt was there. Uh, in case you people in England wouldn't know what a Taoiseach is, that's the Prime Minister of Ireland was there. And, uh, you know, we went on a kind of a whirlwind tour then of Dublin, different night spots and different places. 
uh, and uh, eventually ended up in 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 the Barclay Court Hotel. Paul was so confident that he'd hired a suite for the night to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> so we ended up at about five in the morning in this suite. And it, in a way, it was a kind of an anticlimax. And, it, you know, we were all stunned. We were sitting there, you know, it wasn't what's after happening. So myself and my wife went off to bed. But the next morning, we came down to a phalanx of 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 cameras and photographers and and uh, journalists, and I remember we were outside the hotel and 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 they uh, were started asking us questions and you know this was all new to us, you know okay we'd been on telly and radio and all that kind of stuff but this thing you were suddenly almost a national hero you know because yeah. you'd won for Ireland. Let's uh, fast forward now 30 years to this year's Eurovision Song Contest, Doomsday Blues by Bambi Thug. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, when, when I heard the song first, you know, I said, this is, this is exactly what we need to do to, be, to, to win the Eurovision. It's got the visual aspect, you know, it, it's, it's strange, it's weird. And she has a fantastic screen presence. You know, she had the contact lens in her eyes to make one eye look a different color than the other. She had all the paraphernalia that seems to be what people want in Eurovision this year. Now, a lot of the people, my friends, people have said, no, it's no rock and roll kids. We won't be sticking around the piano singing that one this year, you know. And yet I said, no, have a listen now. I think this is this has got a chance. And then last week on the uh, last Friday night's Late Late Show, she sang the song in a completely different setting, absolutely completely different setting. And it was equally good in that setting. So I asked somebody uh, in, uh, in the late lady, which one is she going to be doing? And seemingly what they said was, we think she's going to go back to the original version. But I liked the, the acoustic version as well and the simplicity of it. it was beautifully staged as well. The grand piano with flowers all over it. But I think she has a very good chance. Me too. Uh, best of luck, of course, to uh, Bambi Thug representing Ireland in Eurovision this year. Charlie, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for sharing your memories and thank you for joining us on the show. It was an absolute pleasure and uh, enjoy the Eurovision. I'm sure you'll be watching. I'll be watching, of course. Thank you, Charlie. Me too.